In a slightly different turn of events this year, Adobe has released its major Photoshop upgrade a little bit early. So typically we get that big, uh, that big major yearly update in October at Adobe Max. It's September of 2023. We now have a new version of Photoshop called Photoshop 2024. Thought we'd take a few minutes to go over what's new specifically generative fill is out of beta. So if you're somebody that didn't want to install the beta and wanted to use that feature, um, or somebody that you know had trouble with the beta, it's out of beta, it's into the main release. Let's take a look here. Uh, main thing you'll see is uh, the title bar, everything says Photoshop 2024. Internally in your Creative Cloud updater, it's version 25, okay? Version 24 is last year's version, the 2023 version. So if you don't wanna use a new version, then you can install the update to 24. It's not gonna have generative fill and some things in it, but that's your older version. Uh, if you do install the new version and you're good with everything, there's no need to continually keep updating version 24, last year's version. Um, so you can just delete that and no longer update that and start using Photoshop 2024. As usual, all comments and questions and ideas and thoughts about Adobe's update process and how to do it and specifically complaints should always go to Adobe and never in the comments. Let's take a look at generative fill because I think what I really want to do is show you how to use this in the real world. Okay, I could, could we go in and could I make a selection on top of the monkey and could I add a hat on there? I absolutely could, and it does a fantastic job. It looks like it was on there, the way they put that, the fur around it and everything, it looks like it was it was right on there. Um, that's not what I want from generative fill though, okay? And I think it's it's probably not what most of you want is to go in and, and you know put a mountain into a landscape photo that you've taken or a house where one didn't exist or something like that. Where the big place where I'm using it is removing distractions. So what I did is I took the lasso tool and made a selection of that area in the upper left-hand corner. I wasn't able to make that go away with the, and it's a big distraction to me because I like this photo. I wasn't able to make that go away with the content aware or the remove tool. So I made a selection. Once I make a selection, this little taskbar for generative fill will pop up. If you don't see the taskbar, it's under the window menu under contextual taskbar. And you can always get to generative fill if you don't want to use that under the edit menu as well. So we've got our taskbar here. You can also click the little pop-out menu. You can pin that taskbar. That actually is a fairly new feature. The beta, it would reset itself. Now it'll, it should stay where you pin it, or you can hide it if you don't want it. And then click on generative fill. Now, when you wanna use it to remove something, don't type remove, don't type delete, just leave it. Just leave it blank and it'll generally work like content aware fill or the remove tool would in removing something. It's only if you're not, you don't like the results you're getting, that's where I go in and that's where I type a prompt to help it out a little bit. But in this case, it did a great job. That's what it filled it in with, okay? Then I made another selection of the bottom left-hand corner. I went to generative fill again, I filled it in with that. Then what I did, and I think this is important to learn, again, real world process with these tools, is I merged everything up onto one layer, command option shift E, control alt shift E, gave me one new layer, and I used the remove tool to just paint in that bottom area a little bit. And then I went back and forth with another couple ideas on how to fill that in, just to give a little bit of interest down there. I didn't want it to be all green. Once again, I merged everything up onto one layer. These spots up here were bugging me a little bit, so I used the remove tool. There's no reason to use generative fill on them, so I just painted them over with the remove tool, which we'll take a look at in just a minute here, by the way. And then I reduced the opacity, okay? Just to have it blend in with the original, show a little bit of highlights back there. So for me, that is more of a real world way to start using these tools, to start doing tasks that we've always been able to do, but to do them a little bit better or faster, or in some cases in a way that some of those tools couldn't do, uh, which is removing distractions. So speaking of doing that stuff in the real world, got two things for you. Give me 60 seconds. I promise there, there's something free for you in here too. Um, I have a free ebook called 21 Tips and Tricks for Generative Fill. Check the description. You can download that for free. Some good little tips and tricks inside of there for you. The other thing is I created a very short, very affordable course called Real World Photoshop AI, specifically in the ideas of what you saw here. Okay. I'm not going to show you how to to do all this crazy stuff to make fake photography, okay? I don't want that from it. What I want is to take some of these tasks 
that I always do. Selections, changing backgrounds, removing distractions. You know, maybe I do need to add something to a photo. You know, maybe need to add grass somewhere in uh, taking a photo outside, whatever that happens to be. But how to do real world tasks that I think still keep your creative integrity intact where you're just using these tools to do something you could have always done before. You could have always gone outside and taken a photo of something and plopped it into another photo there. But to do some of these tasks a little bit faster, a little bit better, a little bit easier. So it's a very short, very affordable course. I encourage you to swing by and uh, check the link in the description to find out a little bit more. Okay, let's take another look at a place where uh, I like generative fill and that is backgrounds. It's great at replacing backgrounds. So in this case here, this was my son, uh, senior prom. I, he's graduating college already. I can't believe it was that long ago, but you can do select subject. Your little taskbar will pop up here. Don't forget, you can always find it under the window. So you can do select subject there. You can do it under the menu. It's whatever, it all do the same thing. So I selected the subject. And then in that taskbar, there's a little inverse button that we can do to select the background. So the same thing goes for generative fill here. Click on it and just, I, I usually let it go unless I've got something very, very specific. Like I want to replace a person's background with a doctor's office. Okay. Unless I have something really specific. I just let it go and I see what it gives me. And in this case, I'm going to click on the layer here. In this case, what it gave me was a wall. It gave me some, a couple of odd things. So then I went into the prompt and you'll see you've got your properties layer here. This is this is a layer, okay? This is a generative fill layer. You'll know it's got these little stars in the bottom right corner of it. So this is a layer and it'll have properties associated with it. And so this time I gave it a little bit of a prompt. I said a lovely park on a beautiful day with flowers. I gave it a prompt and it gave me a couple of different options that you can click through here. I like this one the best. I tried it again. Again, it gave me a couple of different options in there. I came back to this one. You can save this document. This layer will save along with it. I would encourage you to delete unused variations. They do take up space, a little trash can. And I would also encourage you to let Adobe know, good, poor, or report um, any issues that you have with it because that just helps train the models to make them better for you and for everybody else in the future there. So for me, this is, this is real world. I The way I think of it is I, I personally, I'm, I'm kind of, not necessarily talking to, to professional everyday working photographers. Um, you can decide how useful this is or, or isn't to you. I would say in, in many cases, your job is to get the job done the way the client wants to. And, and, and this can be very, very useful. Personally, I've got buckets of photography. I've got my landscape and my wildlife work where I, I, have, I have some creative integrity to that stuff where I don't necessarily want to make it a fake photo. And I don't want to put fake elements in it. Okay. Then I've got stuff that I do for friends and family, whether it's paid or not paid, it doesn't matter. I think we all have people that ask us to do a favor or take a photo. This example here was you know, exactly that. I'm just doing a favor for people by taking some prom pictures, changing a background. I've got no creative integrity over that. I want this job done as fast as possible and off of my desk. And that's where it can come in handy. Somebody asks you to take a picture of their house because they want to put it up on Airbnb and the grass is brown. That's a great place to use generative fill rather than recoloring it yourself, which can, can look good. Use generative fill to put grass in there for you. Again, your job is to just get that done as fast as possible. You don't, don't put your, 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 your personal, I think your personal spin in on it that, oh, it's gotta be all mine and all mine work and everything like that. Like save that for your personal photography work. For me, get this stuff off my desk as soon as possible. So a couple ideas when it comes to that. All right, uh, moving on down the line, there is also something called generative expand. And we've seen ways to do this before. The popular question is, you know, we, we get, we get a photo and it, it's not in the aspect ratio that we need. So let's say I wanted to have an eight by 10 of this. So I'll go up to the crop tool, type in 10 by eight in this case, cause I want it to be wide. And you'll see a very familiar situation, which is it's gonna force me to crop away part of the photo. All right, so what are your alternatives? Well, your alternative would be do this and now you're gonna have white or borders around this, okay? It's just red cause my background color is red. So you're gonna have borders around that. Maybe I want it even a little bit larger. Well, what you can do 
is go up here to the fill option. Background is default. You can change it to generative expand. Content aware fill can work sometimes too, but to me, generative expand is, is, is taking over that. And the nice part about it, again, leave it blank, click generate, see what it does. Um, it's only at the point where you click that and you're like, oh, I'm not really crazy about the results where I would say, then you can step in, go into that prompt and try a variation inside of here to tell it what to fill it with. But a lot of times it does good right out of the box there. Just keep in mind, this is a lower resolution. You can check with Adobe, it's got various, uh, I think we're at either, I think we're at around 2000 pixels. Um, it was 1024, but I think it's going up to 2000 pixels for this stuff, so. But it, in this case, you would never know. You would never know that it's filling it with uh, that because there's not enough detail in any of these areas, but just something to be aware of. Okay, uh, speaking of the remove tool from before, so this isn't a new tool. We just simply go in here and we scribble over something and I, it works great. It's a great addition into Photoshop, all right? I usually turn off the remove after each stroke one because I, I wanna brush it. I don't want it to automatically do it. And I'll just hit that checkbox there. It'll do a good job at removing something. That's actually probably the worst job it's done so far. Usually every time I do this, it does a really good job at it. But here's a really neat little offshoot of it. And that is a new feature is you can now, and this was my biggest gripe with the tool, you can now outline something, okay? And instead of having to go in there and color it all in, it'll automatically fill it in for you. So basically just close the loop and it'll fill that area in for you, and then you can go in and remove it. So uh, huge, I, I think I, I definitely wasn't the only one that wanted that feature because it used to bug me that I had to color the whole thing in. So hats off to Adobe for, it's a very, very small, but to me, extremely usable uh, adjustment that they made into this one. As I mentioned before, I encourage you to check the links in the description. Uh, free ebook, 21 tips and tricks on using generative fill, plus my real world Photoshop AI course. Very short, very affordable, and it's a great way to understand where this AI stuff can help. I, I, again, I said it before, I think most of us don't want Photoshop editing our photos for us or generating fake images for us. I think we wanna know how to use this stuff in the real world and honestly to do tasks that we've always been able to do but just to do them in a better, faster, easier way so we can really get back to the stuff that we like to do and some of the more creative stuff a little bit faster.